I think a cow neckline can look amazing on a lot of people and you see a really different one where the volume and the shape comes from one shoulder. It's so beautiful, super easy to sew for neat fabrics. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and I really can't swipe the smile off my face because I'm going to share with you a top that can be for summer or winter. It has the most gorgeous neckline and this is a brand new pattern from Sinclair. It's called Chloe. I've got three versions to share for all types of weather for cold weather and for hot weather this pattern can work for whatever season so it's not like a winter pattern or a summer pattern at all the cow feature actually comes from pleats that are on the left shoulder so it's not a neckline feature as such it's like the volume comes from the side and just creates this beautiful cow it's not low at all it's not high i think it's just right i think a lot of cow necklines can be really low sometimes and actually it's sort of hard to find these patterns. There aren't many cow neckline patterns around that I know of because I do look for them because I do like them. The Chloe isn't a really complex pattern. It only has four pattern pieces and the general construction is super simple. What gives it the special wow factor is this neckline that's really easy to sew. You have sleeve options anywhere from sleeveless to varied lengths, short sleeves, elbow three quarters long all the types of sleeves you want. General lengths, you'll find three cut lines on the pattern piece for you to mid hip, full hip, and a little bit longer than that. Because the Chloe is a brand new pattern, it's on sale, 20% off through Sunday the 12th of March. So it's a good time to get it for a little bit less. You can find my affiliate link down below. I do receive a small commission back. It doesn't cost you any extra, and this supports the work that I do here on YouTube. And if you think it's hard to sew, no worries. The sewing segment is coming, and you know that always gives you a good visual of how this comes together and it's really easy this time. The Chloe is for neat fabric so this won't work with a woven. Please do not try it with a woven because it's not going to fit, especially because it's fitted at the bust, the armhole, it's just not going to work with a woven fabric. I'm not going to lie, I'd love to find a design exactly like this but drafted for a woven fabric that would be amazing because it's so pretty. But let's stick to stretchy knit fabrics right now and you need at least 30% vertically and horizontally. You do need that vertical stretch because we have some negative ease at the bust that I'll discuss in a little bit. So I think if you don't have the stretch going down as well, you might end up really uncomfortable here and the top just riding up on this area, in my opinion. Now what's super important is that the fabric has some drape and the drape sometimes isn't related much to the weight of the fabric. You can find really lightweight fabrics that don't drape at all. So just hold it and just move it around your body and see if this is going to drape nicely. So fabrics that are guaranteed to work, uh, the rayon, modal, bamboo, slash bandex types of fabrics, rayon, French terry, bamboo, French terry, those are going to drape amazingly. Some sweater knits are going to drape really, really well. This is one of the fabrics I've chosen for one of my versions. ITY, double brush poly, those are going to work. I've seen a version made in stretch velvet that looked amazing, but just check because some stretch velvet only stretches horizontally. I do have have quite a few pieces of stretch velvet and there's only one of them that has horizontal and vertical stretch so just make sure you check and another fabric that could work is rib knit but you have to be careful because some rib knits don't have spandex in the composition so just check because if there's no spandex in there these are the types of fabrics that are just going to grow and deform out of shape usually those don't drape very well either I have chosen a rib knit for one of my versions and it does have rayon and spandex in the composition along with some polyester so it works really well, it's drapey, it has some stretch and recovery so I think it's okay. Other fabrics that might work are stretch crepes, some poly blends but you just have to check the drape. I've chosen another fabric for my third version that is a polyester fabric with spandex that looks like a cotton broderie and glaze in woven but it's jersey. <laughs> I've used it so much. I've, I've got a lot of that fabric. So one of them is in that fabric because the drape is amazing and it's just really striking and it's black and yeah, it's got texture. So I can't go wrong there. You also need a small piece of interfacing, the type that stretches, you know, tricot knee interfacing because the neckline at the back has a small facing and you do need to interface that to give it some structure. Now on the graphic, you're gonna see a no sign. <laughs> Don't make this with cotton lycra. I think even the lightweight cotton lycra is just really stiff. This is just going to poke up and it's not going to look very nice at all, in my opinion. Same as scuba, I think that's just way too heavy. The pleats could work, but they just end up ballooning, I think. Same as Ponte Roma, that, that doesn't have any drape usually. So I would avoid those types of fabrics and just look for the light to medium drapey ones. I think those are going to give you the nicest results with this 
drapey feature that you have around the neckline and the shoulder. The sizing is really good from 0 to 30 US that goes up to a 63 inch hip and if you've sewn Sinclair patterns before you know that Sinclair patterns has height files so you choose that file first according to your height. I'm a tall file so that's really good because I never have to lengthen things like sleeves or pants it just seems to be right for me so that saves you a bit of fitting adjustment and then after you've chosen your height file then you choose your size based on the full bust in this case Sinclair patterns when you look at the size chart you'll see that there are some sewing bust cup sizes there when you look down at the measurements if you're in the lower range sizes you'll start with a B cup and as your sizes progress so do the bust cups so for my size I have a C cup and that's perfect so I don't need to worry about that I just choose my size based on the full bust the feet I would say is fitted at the bust and then semi fitted at the waist and hips I mentioned there was negative ease and there is three quarters of an inch negative ease at the bust so that's why I'm saying you need that vertical stretch in your knee you cannot make this in a woven it's just not gonna fit and if you want to size up it's just gonna get all deformed up here in the shoulders so yeah, nice and fitted, nice so this doesn't gape and, and fall out of place. It has to be nice around here, around the bust. At the waist, you can have about four inches of ease and at the hips, about two and a half inches of positive ease. So you will have some space in there, but it's not a boxy oversized type of top at all. Personal fitting adjustments. Sometimes I show you things that are changing patterns. Well, usually with Sinclair patterns, it, there's nothing. I just don't change a thing. I just print it, cut it, sew it, and I'm happy and it fits and that's the case this time the only thing I played around with this time is the length of my top so they all have different lengths just experimenting and also because I was trying to use up bits of fabric left over so you see the lengths will vary but that's not fitting that's just length you know for the sewing I'm gonna focus on showing you how to put together this neckline because after you've done that the rest is really really simple the pattern is designed to be sewn partially on the serger and partially on the sewing machine just because of how this comes together. So just bring out your sewing machine. If you're just used to working with knits and a serger, you have to dust off your sewing machine as well because there are some seams that need to be done there. For better accuracy and results, I'll show you how to put the pleats together, the neckline, the facing. Really, really fun. Seam allowance for the pattern is a quarter of an inch. And for the front, there's one thing that you need to worry about when you're cutting it out and marking. So let's hop into the sewing. I have my sweater knit extended on my table as much as I can. Anything left over from the width is right there. I don't want it dangling because it could deform the piece. The fabric here is wrong sides up and you need it to be wrong sides up so that the pleats on the Chloe top end up correct being on your left shoulder. The front is one extended piece. You don't cut it on the fold because it's not the same. It's asymmetric. So on that shoulder you have all the pleats. This is a normal shoulder. So make sure you have that correct. Now I'm going to be marking my pleats on the wrong side because that's how I like to sew them. This is the only piece that you need to be careful about cutting. The back is regular. It's on the fold. You know, no special cutting directions there. Sleeve is the same. <laughs> I'm going to use just a tracing paper to mark my pleats. I hope I can see them. It's really important that they're accurate. I think those marks are really acceptable. I can see them really clearly, so I'm very happy with that. <laughs> I'm here at the iron and I'm going to do two things. Here I have a piece of fabric that will be the one I cut my facing from. And here I have my interfacing on top. So this is the wrong side of the fabric. That's the glue side of the interfacing, obviously. And they have the same shape. I cut it larger. This is my facing. It was only a half pattern piece that you would cut on the fold, but I prefer to extend them it's just easier for me like that and you can see that after I fuse that on then I'm going to place my facing and cut it out and it's going to be the exact same shape being fortunate to find the interfacing that stretches tricot knee interfacing in several colors so I do actually have one that matches you can see it's nice and stretchy when you fuse interfacing to a knit or to a woven it usually tends to shrink a little bit so that's why I prefer to get the fabric to shrink with the interfacing do what it has to do and then place my facing cut it and then it's going to be the original shape shape and I'm always sure that's going to happen.
The other thing I want to do is stabilize the shoulders. So what I need is a mask. It's gonna stretch in the form of a time. So I've just got a little strip of interfacing. It's non-stretch as you can see. And I'm just gonna fuse these here along the shoulders. I've cut these at 3 eighths of an inch because the seam allowance is only a quarter of an inch. So when I sew my seam, I'll be sure to be catching interfacing there. In essence, eliminates the stretch of the shoulder right there. And I think it's really good. I suggest you never skip this. This is in the instructions, but sometimes you'll find patterns where you don't find this. This. If you don't see it in the instructions, just do it anyway. There's actually only four pattern pieces in the Chloe, so there's not much to cut out. Here's the front all extended. Here is the area where I mark the pleats. Down here, the armholes look funny. They're sort of asymmetric just because of how this is going to drape. This is the back, regular cut on the fold, stabilized shoulder, and the facing that is, has already been interfaced. The facing is only for the back. Here is the sleeve. I'm making the long sleeve. You can make a lot of different lengths that you'll find on the pattern piece. I'm just going to prepare the sleeve on its own. I'm going to sew the long seam, do the hem and have it all ready because it's the last thing I'm going to do. I set it in on the round. I've got a jersey needle and I'll be using that one, 80. My sweater knee is not too heavy and there aren't many areas with a lot of layers so I think that will be fine. For the few seams that I'm going to use the sewing machine for, I'm going to use a narrow zigzag. That's my zigzag. Narrow because it's almost flat so the zigzag is very flat. It will almost look like a straight stitch and that will be my stitch length. This is the back neckline and I've just put my facing following the shape right sides together there and you'll see two little notches here on the facing and the ones that you match on the neckline. Everything matches one to one and we're just going to sew this one with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'll be using my narrow zigzag and my quarter inch presser foot. As with any facing because this is going to be turned towards the inside we need to snip a little bit or else it won't lie nice and flat. So do a few snips around this curve. And then the next step is optional, which is under stitching, but I never want to skip it because I do want the facing to stay inside. So I'm just going, going to extend this, make sure the seam allowance is always underneath the facing and sew right there on the edge with the same narrow zigzag stitch I've used to sew these two pieces together. I'm not going to under stitch from the very edge. I'm going to start about three eighths away. That's how it looks, it's super neat, and this is gonna make the back lie nicely. Now, in the instructions, it said to fold this in by 3 8 and press it to create a crease for later, to top stitch it down. But I think this fabric is a little fluffy. I don't know, I would rather just serge the edge and just top stitch it down like that with a serged edge. I think it'll just look a little flatter with this fabric. Now we're just gonna put this aside and start working on the front. Here we have the front. This is the shoulder where we're gonna have all the pleats, and then you can see this shape that has a white line. I also marked it there. It was on the pattern. This is where this is going to be folded in and it's going to be the front neckline. So I have gone ahead and searched that edge right there. It's all nice and neat. Here we're going to have four pleats and the way I think making pleats is easy every single time is just doing them from the wrong side and actually basting them, doing a basting stitch and then releasing that basting stitch once you've sewn the pleat down. So this is going to be one pleat, these two first lines, then these two lines are going to be the second pleat, then these lines are going to be the third and then those two lines are going to be the fourth so they don't have the same depth so what I'm going to do is just get the first pleat and I'm going to put a pin here on these two first lines this line with that line underneath and there's my first pleat and now I'm going to get the next pleat here do the same take this when you're folding this you're getting right sides together on the other side I'm working on the wrong side here put a pin through here put a pin through on the other side there and now is the third pleat over here. I find working with them from the wrong side like this much easier than just trying to overlap everything on the right side of the fabric. I also find it hard to mark on the right side of the fabric so that's why I just prefer to do it from the wrong side. Here is the fourth pleat right here. Okay one two three four pleats. I'm gonna use a long stitch length and just baste this down one inch per pleat. That's all. I just need to keep them in place. This is just a straight stitch with a long stitch length. That's all. Nothing special here. This won't stay. It's just temporary. I want to sew right on that little white line that I have there. I can see it really clearly. Okay, let's look at this from the right side. Here is the neckline. Here is the shoulder. You want the volume of the pleats to go towards the shoulder. So like this. Basically, when you look at it from the wrong side, the volume of the pleat is going towards the neckline. So away from the shoulder. And it makes sense because all that volume is going to go away from this shoulder 
area, if you did it the other way, it would be like on top and how you're gonna sew your sleeve with all this pleat there. Let's flip it again to the wrong side. Here is the wrong side, this is gonna be the left shoulder, here is the shoulder, this is the neckline. All the volume of the pleats are coming this way towards the neckline here. Before we secure this and baste it, it's a good idea to double check that this length is the same as the one that's gonna be on the back, because these are gonna match. So here's my back shoulder, the one that's stabilized. I'm gonna just put it on top and it's perfect. They have the same length as you can see right there. So all the pleats were done correctly. And what we're gonna do is just a little basting stitch to hold everything in place. So I'm gonna do it from the wrong side. I'm gonna baste from here this way so that I can sew with the direction of the pleat instead of against the pleat. Okay, here is where it gets interesting. Let's just take our front neckline. This is right sides up. This has just been basted. And now we take our back. Remember we have our facing just sewn on, but it's still loose. So we're gonna match this little shape to that little shape. And then the rest of the shoulder to the shoulder right here. And when we sew, it's gonna be a type of pivot there. Basically where the seam is that unites the facing to the back neckline that has to match that shape right here so right there seam allowance has to be kept in the same direction as we understitched going up towards the facing and then just align all the shoulder I really can't see how you can do this accurately directly on the serger just because of this little shape here because we have to pivot here and then look at this how are you going to be able to manipulate this properly on the serger so I'm going to be doing it with a sewing machine so that's that side and it's the same on the other side it's just that this side has the pleats but just ignore them <laughs> they just based it on there the same this seam that unites the facing to the back neckline goes right there on that little shape I haven't removed those basting stitches that I did to hold the pleats down I'm going to remove Move them after this seam has been sewn. I've marked a little dot where I'm going to raise the presser foot and just move everything to the other side on both sides. I'm going to do a narrow zigzag again. I've got my quarter inch presser foot. This is how it's going to look on the other side. You can see the shape is different. This is the back, this is the front, but then when it gets folded in, everything's going to be perfect. Now on this side, I'm going to have to start from the facing. Okay, now that I'm done with this seam, I am going to clean it up with a serger, but being super, super careful to not trim anything. Yeah, I'll be doing it right on the edge, basically. <laughs> now that everything's sewn, I can go ahead and pull out these basting stitches I had done in the beginning. They're going to come flying out. And now here are the gorgeous pleats. Super pretty. Remember the bulk of the pleats is going towards the shoulder right here. And this is where the facings are united. So the back has a facing, the front doesn't, it's just an extended piece. And this is where this is gonna be folded like this. This is the garment wrong sides out. I have folded the back facing and just placed it nice and flat along the back. Here is the shoulder seam right here. This is the front integrated facing that doesn't get top stitched, or at least I don't really think it needs to. It might need some, but for now, I'm just gonna baste the back. I really want this to be nice and neat and flat. Hand basting always helps. <laughs> I'm actually just gonna leave this hand basted for now. I'm gonna come back and do the top stitching at the very, very end once I'm able to try this on because I want to see if I do need to stitch down part of that front neckline and I think I'll be able to see that with the garment on the body. I really hope I don't have to top stitch anything on the front because I don't wanna sew through those pleats. Okay, at this stage we have loose armholes. If you wanna sew your sleeve in on the flat, this is when you do it, you just sew the whole sleeve and then sew the seam of the sleeve with a side seam in one go. But I'm gonna be sewing the side seams now separately. I'm gonna have a completed armhole and then I'm gonna just put my sleeve and sew it on the round like I usually do. I tried it on and basically just sewing the back facing is gonna be okay. I don't really need to sew anything here on the front. This folded in stays in and it's perfectly fine, at least with this fabric. What I did here though was sew by hand this seam through the other side. So I just did a few stitches to hold these two together. So all along the shoulder seam over here and in there, I have had some hand sewing. And it's really easy with a sweater knit because it's fluffy and the thread just gets lost in there. So all I did was go back and forth, you know, and just tack that down. But I am going to top stitch that down. I'm going to do it from the wrong side, just along the edge with a narrow zigzag. If you find the content really helpful for your own sewing, please like and don't forget to subscribe. I didn't include the general 
things like sewing side seams and sleeves because that's really simple. In my construction method, the way I do everything is doing the side seams first, having the sleeves all done, and then I insert the sleeves in on the round. I do that for knits and wovens. If you want to know more about why and my reasons, I have a whole video about it. it. looks like this. I'm going to show you my winter version first, which I made in a really gorgeous sweater knit. That is the version you saw me sewing in the tutorial. And it's a really dark red. It's so beautiful. And you can see there are specks of black there in the weave. I've purchased this type of sweater knit in several colors because I just love how soft and drapey it is. I have it in black and green and like pink and red and yeah, all sorts. And I'm glad I was able to sew this one up. I'm so glad I didn't need to top stitch that front cowl piece. This right here is the edge that was surged and it's just folded in and I've worn it and it just doesn't come out and I think it's fine. So I didn't really think you had to sew that down. I think that wouldn't look very nice, especially if you're working with a solid. Maybe with a print you wouldn't see the top stitching, but I really wanted to avoid it and that's why I decided to tack the seam down through all the layers by hand right there. At the back, the facing is top stitched and it's super neat. I had matching <laughs> interfacing, which is amazing. As usual, I have a twin needle hem right there so far i'm really happy with my twin needle hems i don't seem to have many problems with them so that's how i do them all all the special detail was this and you saw how easy it was to put the pleats together from the wrong side i find it much easier than marking on the right side and just trying to fold them onto each other i find that super fiddly so i prefer to sew the pleats i think that's so easy and then you can just take the basting stitches out this is the way i do my pleats on wovens or knits on any garment that you see me do pleats, this is how you see me do it and I just find it enjoyable like that. And the end result is exactly the same thing. Sweater knit was super important here to stabilize those shoulders. You know, this sweater knit will deform if I don't do that. I've done really simple styling, but it's still a little bit extra. <laughs> I paired it with my black and white poppy pants, also from Sinclair Patterns. So let's see. This is my first Chloe top from Sinclair Patterns. This is my winter version in a red sweater knit. It's so nice. It's a light to medium weight sweater knit and it has the right amount of drape I think. I've paired it here with my black and white poppy pants also from Sinclair Patterns. For this one I've used the second cut line so it hits my full hip but it doesn't cover it so there is a longer version available. I think that this is okay. I would actually shorten it a little bit. I've got the long sleeves and the sweater knit is amazing. The cow neckline doesn't sit high, it doesn't sit low, it sits just right and the pleats were easy to manage and easy to sew with this fabric. I think it's going to be perfect and I can't wait to wear this amazing sweater when the weather gets cold but no worries you can make the pattern in any type of fabric I do have some summer ones to show as well but this winter one is just so nice so amazing it's not boxy it's not basic it's just so gorgeous so beautiful this is a size 16 tall file I love this color so much So after wearing it a little bit and looking at the footage and the photos, I think I could shorten it maybe by an inch. The length is such a subjective thing and I have to feel it, like I have to feel it. <laughs> I do like a mid to full hip length, I don't like it too long or too short, so I don't really mind doing the hem again, that's something I'll never mind because I know that having the correct length is going to make me want to wear it more. I'm super happy with this winter one, I can't wait to wear it, it's going to be amazing when it gets cold here in about may ish next i'm going to show you a sleeveless version and for this i chose a rib knit it was a tiny piece left over from another garment i made a turtleneck and i had just enough so it had to be sleeveless and this one is the shortest one of the three and i actually cut this at the shortest line that you had available on the pattern so you have three lines there this is the shortest line and i think it's still fine it's still at the mid hip I love the burgundy, it's really beautiful. They are different, this is red, this is burgundy. <laughs> so you don't think they're all the same. Now you can see right here on this area where the ribs are going up and down, you know, this area, the side seams are on the grain, but then this sort of changes and then look how you have the shoulder seam where the stripes are coming like this. 
So make sure you consider that if you wanna make this with anything that has a stripe or a plaid, it's gonna really distort the shape up here and it can look really funny. So I would avoid, in my opinion, I mean, you can do whatever you want, <laughs> but I wouldn't wanna make this in a stripe or a plaid because it would really deform and it would just look really, really funny up here. And then it would look, look normal down there. So yeah, solid or a print that's just busy and you can't tell. It, this one was just as easy to sew. The pleats are very nice. The cow neckline stays inside very neatly. I have that interfaced as well. All the rest is the same, it's just a little shorter. Here I did a binding technique that's different to the one in the pattern because the one in the pattern went all the way inside, but I didn't want to lose any height here. I wanted more cover. So I just basically wrapped my binding around and instead of sewing it visibly, I did it stitching the ditch right there so you can't see the seam and I think that looks really nice. In there, I didn't leave the edge raw, I searched it. I'll leave you my video about bands and bindings with the minute where this technique appears if you want to see more detail. But yeah, it's super easy to do. I've paired this one with one of my sky skirts from Sinclair patterns that I made last year in a denim look jersey i think it's a really good pairing and that denim look jersey is navy and it can just go with anything and i think it pairs really well with the burgundy this is my second chloe top from sinclair size 16 this is the shortest length available and this version is sleeveless and i made it in a rib knit i've got it paired with one of my sky skirts also from sinclair patterns i really love this color and this fabric is so soft you can see this one is at the mid hip it's the shortest length available and i think it's a nice length. I made it this short because that's the fabric I had available. Up here you can see the neckline. I think the pleats and the drape feature looks really nice and the fabric was perfect. I was happy to use rib knit because there is spandex in here and the fabric does have recovery. You can see how beautiful the pleats are. It's so easy to sew. <laughs> this is a sleeveless version. I think the cover in the armhole is really good. I've put binding there and I stitched it in the ditch so that you can't see that seam. I think it looks really neat and yeah I love this top so much. I want to make it in all colors it's just so so pretty it's not a basic and it's super easy to sew i love this color so much My third one is a basic and I call it a basic because it's black and it can go with everything. So I don't mind having a lot of black things in different styles because they're all gonna match different moods and outfits and yeah, I just like having black things. So here is my black one. <laughs> This is a fabric you've seen before. I've used it with many other projects. I have it in several colors. I love it. The little openings in the embroidery, they let you see your skin, but I don't need to wear things underneath. That's fine. And everything was the same with this one, sleeveless also. With this one, I've done the same type of binding where you sew it in the ditch right there so you don't see the seam and I think it looks really clean. I love doing that method. And I think this looks amazing. The drape is so nice facing everything was really good this one is about an inch longer than the burgundy one that i've just shown you i think this is the favorite length for me so i think i'm going to take this as a reference to shorten my sweater version the first one i've shown you we'll see i just think the first one's a little long but yeah this is so beautiful it was so easy to sew <laughs> i've paired it over a really colorful skirt my balboa skirt from each to stitch that i love and yeah it's great. This is my third Chloe top from Sinclair Patterns. I had to make a black one. This is also a size 16 tall file. This one's a little longer than the shortest length on the pattern piece and it's also sleeveless. Up closer you'll see that I have a textured knit. Looks like embroidery and glaze but it's not a woven. This is a knit and it's a really drapey fabric. Really happy with the ease and the length of this one and I think this top is going to be a basic. The drape is amazing. <laughs> I just love it so much. It's so pretty and it's got the right height it doesn't drape low or high it's just just right i've used the same binding technique i used with my other sleeveless version very neat i didn't need to top stitch the integrated facing on the front it just drapes and folds inside on its own at least for my versions there was no need to sew that down and i'm happy i didn't need to do that i love sewing a black top i don't mind sewing many of them but they're always different different styles black is really easy to wear and it just goes with everything it's just really easy to throw on over a colorful skirt like this one
basically this pattern just ticks so many boxes. It's pretty, it's for neat fabrics, it's easy to sew, it only has four pattern pieces. I mean, what else can you want? And it's not a basic, it's not a t-shirt, it's not a basic neat top, it's really pretty. So yeah, cow necklines galore, so, so pretty, so beautiful. I think the depth of the neckline is just right. It's not low, it's not gonna show your cleavage if you bend over. I think a lot of people worry about that with cow necklines, that they can just end up showing everything <laughs> usually really low but this is not and I think it's so so amazing I wish I would have had time to make more because I just feel really great in this style and I love having a detail like that up here on the neckline don't forget that the Chloe is 20% off through Sunday the 12th so a few more days still I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you again very soon with more sewing you'll be seeing me a lot this week just warning you bye